Hi everyone, Rich Kitzman here. I'm here to continue on a series that I've been talking about, and that is our journey to the throne room of God. And I talked, I had one other session about it, and I want to continue on. This will be my second one, and there may be another one or two after this. Uh, but I want to, I, as, you're, as I'm going through this, if you are enjoying these presentations that I'm giving, if you could just uh, subscribe to it, uh, mark like, and please share this material so others can benefit from it as well. Now, what I talked about so far was in the was last time was the first teaching on this journey to the throne room uh, or the journey to his presence. There's different ways of saying it. Uh, and I covered um, some I covered three things. One was shout. Where does shouting fit into this journey? Also talked about speaking and singing and sung and tongues. And I also talked about making declarations. Now those are the first three. Now I'm going to cover a couple more, but I want I want to be sure you understand something about this, that this is very subjective. This is something that I do. I'm not saying the things I'm covering are definitely from the Bible, but the way that I'm getting there to the throne room of God is something that I have discovered myself. This is something that I have uh, experienced over many years uh, with by myself and with others. And in the process of going through this over many years, I have, I have taken what I've learned and put it into these notes that I'm giving to you right now. So, so I hope it's helpful, but again, this is something that I do. You, if you, uh, in your journey to the throne room, you may do something entirely different. Uh, but I'm just putting this out there so it, it can be helpful for others. So the fourth one, I'm going to cover, I think, probably three. The next one here is thoughts from God. What I have found in spending time in the presence of God, and, I, and if I'm just laying there or talking to him, or I'm in a group situation and we are all moving toward the presence of God, many times as you're... Um, you're singing a song, or you may just be laying there. Thoughts will come to me. The first few times this happened, I thought I was letting my mind wander, you know, like daydreaming. And um, when I began to realize it wasn't daydreaming, it was the Lord trying to speak to me. He was planting thoughts in my mind of things that I had either forgotten about or something I forgot, to, like maybe I forgot to make a phone call to somebody and he's reminding me. I have found that when I, tr when I, as I, have quieted myself down or in the process of quieting myself down what i mean by that is i'm 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 taking my focus and i'm putting it on the lord i'm not letting other things distract me away and 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 other and other um to, to disturb me from god but as i get focused on the lord sometimes thoughts would come to me and i have discovered that these thoughts are almost always coming from god and sometimes they just seem like small things but it's like I said, it's where maybe I forgot to call somebody. So it's it's important, I think, uh, you can do what you like, but sometimes I take, I have a notebook right there beside me, and sometimes I have my phone. And it, if he says, I get I feel like I'm supposed to call somebody, I just call him right there, or, or I'll make a note in my notebook and, and do it later. Um, and I want to read a scripture here. Uh, we, we must realize that this... This journey to the courts of the Lord, as we as we near uh, at the end of our journey, and by then entering into the courts of the Lord, this is a great. This is a very important place because it's here we we can learn the secrets of God. There's a scripture in Matthew thirteen eleven says, "Because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven have been given to you, but not to them." Uh, so so. God is looking for those times that he can give his secrets to us. And I'm not saying that this journey to the courts of the Lord is the only time, but it definitely is a primary time when he can begin to reveal or speak things to us that possibly we have never seen before. There are secrets. The secrets of God have been given to us. We have to go out and set the environment in such a way that we can, we can hear the secrets. We can, we can digest them and they can become part of us. There's many times that we need heavenly strategies, is what I call them. We need help. We don't know what to do. We need directions from the Holy Spirit. 
This is a good time for that to happen. Now the next one, that's number one. So that one was um, thoughts from God. The next one is, I call this social interreaction. Now you can call it what you want, but, but I find that when a group of people, now this involves a group, when they get together with the, the main focus here is to go to the courts of the Lord. And so they all are focusing on that and they'll begin, like I said in the beginning of this, I have a vehicle and it's, the vehicle is getting in the vehicle and you have songs playing and you are all beginning to sing the song to, to start your journey. And then you can get in and out of that vehicle anytime you want. So in the social re reaction is everybody's worshiping. Now everybody's encountering God in different ways. And so I encourage people when a group is getting together to lay next to each other or to lay head to head so that you can hear each other talking to yourselves, but also talking to God. Because you have to remember that every person and every person's endeavor here, destiny is to, is to get into the presence. So as we begin to make that journey towards his presence, things begin to happen in people. And we want to be able to hear what they're saying. Because many times as you begin to get revelation from God, you begin to speak it. You begin to thank God. You begin to, you may begin to expound, actually expound on what you're getting by saying it out loud. So others then can, can benefit from this. This is another reason to have a notebook. I mean, you may be laying next to somebody and they're saying things that you've never heard before. And, and you've never, especially, you've never heard them say it before. What's going on there? They're getting into the courts of the Lord and they're seeing things they've never seen before. We all need to benefit from those things. And the way to benefit is to be laying right next to somebody and listen to them and possibly make a note of it so you can think about it or study it out later. Now, I want to... I'll, I'll just share one experience, and I'm gonna I'm gonna share something from the Bible as well, um, a story out of the Bible. But I, and when I was in a group situation one night, I I'm laying I, and like I said in our situations, I encourage people just lay on the floor because uh, I don't want people falling on me as we're worshiping. So I'm laying next to another brother, and there's there's one on each side of me, and we're worshiping. All of a sudden, I get a sensation, and I know this is barely, fairly subjective because we're entering into a realm that's that we're being led by the Spirit, okay? So I'm laying there, and I, I sense that the presence of God is like right over the top of me as I'm laying on the floor. And I didn't say anything. I just laid there, and I, and, and I was actually, I was a little hesitant to move around much because I felt like the presence of God like was right over me. And I'm laying there and I'm just trying to, uh, I'm enjoying the experience, but, yes, there, but yet there was a soberness to it as well. And so the guy laying right next to me on my right side, all of a sudden he says this, he says, I feel like, I feel like God is right over the top of me. And I thought, wow. And then I boarded it. I said, I'm experiencing the same thing. See, that's the purpose. That's one of the reasons we want to talk during these times that we're worshiping. Now, perhaps when I say that we, in a group, we should talk to one another as we worship, and you may be thinking, well, we, I've been taught to be quiet. Well, there's nothing wrong with being quiet, and there are definitely times to be quiet during worship, uh, but I have found worship is a time of, 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 a, of a ups and downs of emotions, but it's also a time of being, it can be a time of, like I said earlier, of shouting in my, in my previous uh, teaching. And so these are not necessarily quiet times. I, I found most of the time throughout the Bible, it doesn't really say they were shouting. Well, it does in some cases, but there were groups of people when they get together. You don't, they don't really expound on what was going on during the times they were together, but you really, something was happening. For example, when Saul in the Old Testament, the, the prophet, uh, no, the king, excuse me, King Saul, when he was after David, David took off and went, with, went to Samuel the prophet. And he, David is spending some time with Samuel and the prophets. Now, Saul was after David this time. He was trying to capture David. He actually was trying to kill David because Saul was a king and, and he, he hated David. So he's trying, to, he's trying to find him. We heard 
he, he heard where he was, so he sent three regiments of soldiers to go get him. The, the soldiers did find him, but they never could bring him back. But then when they go back to report to Saul, they, they never had a good reason why they never brought him back. So Saul decides to go do it himself. He said, you know, if you can't expect anybody else to do it, then do it yourself. So Saul takes off and he finds out where David is. And as he, he gets the last from the last person he talked to, they said, yeah, he's over at so-and-so. So he heads that way. And then he sees, he sees David off in a distance with, with Samuel and the prophets. So what does he do? He starts heading that way. Now, it, the Bible implies that David and, and the prophets and Samuel had been together for probably days. What were they doing? They were worshiping the Lord. They were enjoying the presence of God for days. This is something that I don't see a lot of happening amongst believers, getting together as a group. We're doing it for two hours, but what would this be like to get together for days? I've been thinking about this. I've been pondering of getting together a group maybe for 24 hours and worshiping and see what happens. But in the Old Testament, there's Samuel and the prophets. They've been at it for days. How do I know that? Because, because the King Saul had sent three detachments of soldiers to go get David. So this was not just in one day. This was going on over a longer period of time. So the point of it is now is when, Sam, when uh, Saul makes his approach to, to the prophets and Samuel and David, he gets, he gets to a place where he, he can no longer stand. It says he, he fell to the ground. He took off his clothes and he worshiped God for, for all, it says, all night long. He, and he was prophesying. Why? Because Samuel... And the prophets and David had had affected the the area they were in, and when when Saul then when King Saul came towards them, he was so impacted by this power that was around them that he couldn't function. He fell to the ground. See what was going on? Heaven had come down to earth in amongst the prophets, Samuel and David. If that happened in the Old Testament, shouldn't that be happening today? over and over and over again. What were these? What were the prophets of Samuel and David encountering during this time? The Bible doesn't say that, I don't believe. I never found it. It doesn't say what they were encountering, but they had to be encountering something very powerful because Saul, when he walked into that environment, he was knocked to the ground immediately. He just fell to the ground. He couldn't function. So there's something about the saints getting together with a purpose of, of, of uh, worshiping the Lord together as a group. Now, the other point I want to make in that is since they were together for days, I think it would be safe to assume they were probably talking to one another while they were worshiping. It may be even safe to assume they were even maybe eating together. It doesn't say they were fasting and praying, but they, were eat, they probably were eating together. So they were having like a party, but they were continually pressing into the presence of God while they were talking to one another. And amazing things were happening. You take another example in the New Testament. You take Paul when he was in Antioch in Acts 13. It said there was a group of people together. It wasn't a larger group, at least five of them. And they were together and they were, they were worshiping. Now, again, the Bible doesn't say how long they were together. I don't know for sure. But you get the impression it was for a while. It might have been several hours. It may have been over a day. I don't. The Bible doesn't say. But all of a sudden, in the midst says the Holy Spirit spoke and said, separate from me, Paul and Barnabas, actually called Saul at that time, to go to the work that he had sent them. And so powerful things happen when you're in the courts of the Lord or the throne room of God or in the presence of God. They happen. All I'm trying to do is encourage you to find some brothers and sisters and to spend time in his presence. I get nothing out of this. I just want to share the things I've experienced so others can experience them as well. Now, another thing that happens in this, in this social, socialization that takes place is as you're spending time in the presence of God and you're worshiping him and you, and you are talking to the Lord and he's giving you revelation and so on, and you're talking to one another, camaraderie happens. The relationship you have with people all of a sudden gets closer. And you, you're, as brothers and sisters, you start, you start you're feeling more and more like a family because the, your, your friendships are increasing why is that? Because you're in the presence of the Lord. You're in the presence of the Lord. And so your friendships are getting deeper and you appreciate one another and thankfulness rises out of your heart 
for the Lord and also for your brothers and sisters. Uh, okay, I want to I want to read one other scripture, and this is this is still again under socialization. That is, so all Israel. Now I'm emphasizing the word all. It wasn't just a few; it was the whole nation. Brought up the ark of the covenant of the Lord with shouts. Shouting is part of worship with sounds of the ram's horn and, and trumpets and the cymbals and the playing of the lyres and harps. This is David taking the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem. How did he do it? He did it with shouting, playing and playing instruments and trumpets and horns and so on. And who was there? Everybody was there. So worship isn't meant to be just a, a quiet time only. It is meant to be a celebration and, and when that's going on, guess what? The presence of God comes in the mix. Now, after you've had this kind of, after you've been worshiping and experiencing <clears throat> socialization, now you may want to get out of the, get back in the vehicle. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean, I mean you now and you've been talking, you've been getting things from God, you've been saying these things back to God. Others are hearing you say the revelation you're getting from God during this time. So now you may just that all that all that may start to pass, and now you may want to go back in the vehicle. And by that I mean you're starting to sing other song. You're starting to sing the song that's playing. So now you start singing the song. But now as you're singing the song, you sense the presence of God once again overwhelming you. And you, you have an urgency to sing. You want to sing your song. So now you're, you're, you're going to use that creative ability that you've been given by God. And you begin to think of some words, some lyrics, and you begin to sing your own song. That's called a spiritual song. It's in the Bible. It's in Ephesians 5. I'm not going to read it. Uh, it says, but it says we're to, we're to sing, we're to sing hymns, psalms, and spiritual songs. And it's in Ephesians 5, 18 through 20. I'll let you turn to it. You're probably familiar with it. But so, so you begin to sing a song, a song you've never sang before. You're making it up as you go. I want to say something about that. When you, when you put your creative ability to work and you're trying <clears throat> to express what's on your heart back to the Father and you are coming up with your song, a new song, but it's your song, and you begin to sing this song to the Lord, all of a sudden what you have become is a magnet what, am I, what do I mean by that? You have, be, you have become a magnet to draw the presence of God down on you because the Father sees what you're doing. He's seeing you trying to express what's on your heart back to Him in thankfulness and appreciation and giving praise to Him through a song that you're making up on the spot. When, that, when you do that, when you do that, not, not, let, me, let me say, not under your own effort, but you just feel like in the, in the midst of worship, you want to express your heart's desire to Him. When you do that, <coughs> excuse me, it causes your, it causes the presence of God to get heavily over you and you feel overwhelmed even more and you feel, uh, it's hard for me to explain how you feel. I've been there many, many, many times and it's so satisfying. It's so rewarding and it's, it's just hard to put into words. And so that can happen through the spiritual song as I call it. Now, the next song I want to talk about is is intercession. Now you may go back into the vehicle again. You may start singing the songs that are playing, but then all of a sudden you start thinking of people, places. You start thinking of situations and, and, and you you begin to become overwhelmed about people, situations, and so on to the point you want, you may start in the midst of this journey of going to the house of the Lord. All of a sudden now you want to pray for people. Is that correct? Is that okay to do that? Absolutely. Because now what that is, that's intercession. And during a time of worship, see, these are all these different activities start taking place. This is why it could be two hours long. It seems like 30 minutes. It just seemed like you're just getting started, but all of a sudden two hours have gone by. So this intercession is one part of this. You may feel a burden in your heart for some people. It may be people in your own church. It may be people in another state another country and you and their situations and you start to pray it may be about you it may be about your family or something it could be anything and you begin to pray let me ask you something when you're in this environment do you think your prayers may be answered i mean you're just saturated with the presence of god another thing i've noticed when you're when you're on this journey 
you begin to realize that God really does have everything under control. He really does. You begin to realize the immenseness and the, and the glorious presence and the power of God. And you begin to realize God, God has everything under control. Matter of fact, I've seen many times in worship, as I'm worshiping, I just begin to laugh because I begin to think of the problems in the world. And then, I, I, then I'm coming into his presence and I realize the problems of the world do not match up even close to the power that God has to bring reconciliation into those problems, none whatsoever. And so you, you, you begin to realize the greatness and the immensity of God. So, so back to the intercession. So you, you, you feel like you're really getting a burden about some things. So you begin to pray. So part of this worship is inner, it can be intercession. You begin to pray for people and you begin to pray for situations. And all of a sudden you feel released from that. You've done it. You've interceded for those things. And then you begin to worship again. You, you jump back in the vehicle and you begin to sing the songs that are playing. All right, I'm going to stop there and I'll pick this up in my next session. I'll go on with this journey. So that's two right now, two, two uh, teachings on the journey. And we're getting very close, if not already, into the courts of the Lord. I'll see you the next time around. Thanks a lot.